Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is John Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're well, very happy to be here with you today on this Saturday. My Strategy radio show episodes are live at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of integrity, signs of people with integrity, we're going to discuss the importance of taking assessments to get an honest look at where you stand. Also going to discuss some of the problems with the integrity tests and how and why people may compromise their integrity. Very happy to be here with you today. Saturday is a great day of the week to reflect on your strategy. But keep in mind that any time is a great time to reflect on your strategy. Now, the My Strategy radio show continues to grow. We're on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more digital platforms. So if you'd like to listen to this in a podcast, uh, you can find it there, or you can find any one of the other episodes that we have. You can find me on most social media platforms. My Twitter handle is at HawkinsJohn. That's at HawkinsJohn, and my website is JohnMHawkins.com. So JohnMHawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. This week, I'm looking for stories about integrity. Do you have any good examples, perhaps a tip or a trick that you could share? Send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Now, weekly uh, we do give away, we do have giveaways uh, from time to time, and there was a winner announced last week uh, for the prize. So uh, you can go to johnmhawkins.com to see if you have won. All right, today we're talking about the pros and cons of being truthful, ethical, and fair. We're going to talk a little bit about what is integrity. Um, the signs of people with integrity, there's certain signs that you can look out for uh, that will give you an indication with regard to whether or not somebody has integrity or not. And interestingly enough, it has to do with how you treat your children, if you have them, of course. Um, we're going to then talk a little bit about the assessment and selection and integrity test. It's interesting because when you look at different types of testings that can be taken for a candidate for an employer uh, in, you know, in these types of integrity tests, sometimes are legal, sometimes they're not. So we're going to dive a little bit into that. We're going to talk about then the problems with some of these integrity tests. There actually is uh, lots of information uh, with regard to integrity testing over you know, the past 100 plus years. And you're going to be interest, interested to find out that Henry Ford used to do uh, some, some integrity testings where he would uh, have committees go to their homes and check on their behavior. I think we're past that in, in 2020. Um, we're then going to talk about how and why you may compromise your integrity. Integrity is your word of honor, and that's what makes you honorable, but sometimes you don't. Um, keep to your word, and that's when there's a, a violation of integrity, which can impact all sorts of other things like trust and, um, and other things as well. So we're going to start off with a definition of integrity. It's the firm adherence to a code, especially moral or artistic values, incorruptible, an unimpaired condition, soundness, the quality or state of being complete, undivided, completeness. I'm going to start here with an article by Suzanne Cain. She starts off her piece with, Live your life with integrity. Let your credo be this. Let the lie come into the world. Let it even triumph, but not through me. That's a quote from Alexander Solzhenitsyn. When it seems like all the world is engaged in lies and deceit, it can be tough to hold on to your integrity. Yet this so crucial is to living a life in harmony 
and balance that it bears, reconsidering the effort it takes to do so. What is integrity? Well, according to Suzanne, integrity is living your life in accordance with an internal set of beliefs. You value honesty, so you will not tolerate a lie. Do not lie just to make a situation easier or to avoid scrutiny or escape additional work. You believe in putting forth your best effort, so you refuse to cut corners, to skip necessary items, to push off to others. What is your responsibility? You pride yourself on your compassion so that you will not just stand by silently as others assail the less fortunate, calling them lazy, incompetent, or stupid. You feel bound to act when you see injustice, to speak up when others don't, to stand up for those beliefs by living them. She says this is easy to say, but it's not so easy to do. Suzanne says this all may sound easy enough, however, it isn't always easy to live with integrity. At times, everyone is tempted to take the easy way out, to compromise their beliefs, to give lie to their values. While this may help in the short term, it does nothing for humanity. Each time you avert your eyes and walk away from your integrity, it chips away at your spirit. There is a cumulative effect of this negativity, of this denying of your true self, you may think that you've escaped unscathed, but you really haven't. She goes on to talk about how to live a life of integrity. If you want to live, if you want to learn how to live life with integrity, try this. Start with something extremely small. Take an activity you do regularly and examine how you can start doing it at your best. For example, if you look forward to shopping at a local coffee house to get your morning latte or cappuccino, for me it's a double espresso macchiato, and quickly hurry to your car to be on your way, imagine yourself being on a deserted island with an espresso machine, with no human beings to keep you company or exchange pleasantries. And as a social animal, wouldn't you do almost anything to hear and reciprocate a few kind words? Now, since you have the opportunity and it only takes a few seconds, say hello and smile to the person next to you in line. Say something kind to the barista or cashier. This small act can reap many rewards. For one thing, you're bringing a bit of yourself into this situation. Sharing your humanity, being real, you may inspire someone else to do the same. Got another article here by Vivek. Heta talks about the pros and cons. He says, people respect you. They actually respect you because you abide by the rules. They know you're a person of integrity. People who want justice or need help come to you. People, they know you are fair and just and will come to you. People also trust you. People want to be your friends. The cons to having too much integrity is people may dislike or hate you because you're the kind of straight tree who makes everything go wrong. There's a difference in values leads to frequent clashes with other people. You end up hurting people just for the sake of morals, and at the end of the day you feel bad for your action and their effect on those people. You have to be fair to your own self, though, even if it means you lose something or someone very important. Your decisions are being scrutinized by people around you, so no chance of hypocrisy is given. And you feel lonely because you won't stand. Because people won't stand by you for long. Your friends will also try to be diplomatic, which can cause rifts. So that's a little bit about integrity, the definition of integrity, and the different perspectives on it. You know, there are definitely pros and cons to any core value that we hold, and a value, as we've talked about in the past, is aspirational. So when we talk about integrity, there are all different nuances. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about some of the signs of people with integrity. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today on this Saturday. Today we're talking about integrity. Right before the break, we talked about uh, the pros and cons of being of integrity, which is being truthful, ethical, and fair. We also gave some definitions of integrity. In this segment, I want to talk about the signs of people with integrity. And I think it's important with any any value system, any core value that we have. You know, we have our own value system. And when we talk, listen to other people, hear their ideas, we're always monitoring for keywords, for trigger words. And if somebody really does believe in integrity and wants to and holds that value to themselves and cherishes it, then they're going to be looking for signs of uh, others who are have integrity and work with integrity. So I've got an article here by Seth Myers, and it is uh, ex- uh, Seven Signs of People with Integrity. He says, integrity is a word you hear almost every day, but it's not a word that people spend a lot of time thinking about. If you try to define it, what would you say? According to the dictionary, integrity is a firm adherence to a code of especially moral or artistic value. Put another way, the root of integrity is about doing the right thing, even when it's not acknowledged by others or convenient for you. An individual with integrity is the antidote to self-interest. There are countless examples of integrity in daily life, yet we seldom see the examples highlighted below acted out in our daily lives. Starts off by saying, parents apologizing to their kids for over-punishing or yelling at them. Like animals, small children make easy targets. They're physically vulnerable by size and stature. They're emotionally vulnerable because they don't have the cognitive capacity to understand the complexities of life. When parents feel overwhelmed, it often follows that they snap at their children or issue too harsh of punishments. He says as a parent himself, he knows how hard it can be. But at the same time, he also knows that delivering an apology to your child when, the, when you've gone too far is something that he or she deserves. It's an interesting one. Have your parents treated you harshly? Think back when you were a kid. Were they apologetic? Or were they not apologetic? Those who apologized might have indicated that they are people of in, with integrity. Number two, Bosch is highlighting their staff's accomplishment and downplaying their own. Now, this is an interesting one to me. He says, as a practicing psychologist, he hears some pretty extreme stories in his office based on the tales. The percent of managers or bosses who are narcissistic, sadistic, or even sociopath appears to be off the charts. Whenever you have power, you'll find someone nearby who's gunning for it. Yet the boss with integrity is a boss, not because he or she wants to have power over others, no, but because they are a natural leader who is good at keeping things organized and who handles challenging situations with dexterity. Simply put, bosses with integrity have no need for power because they know they're good at what they do, And they also have insight into the fact that they get better financial compensation than other workers. The good boss makes a constant effort to appreciate a staff's contribution and give them credit for a job well done. Sadly, you rarely see this kind of healthy, appropriate behavior in the workplace. We definitely need more integrity from bosses far and wide. Now, I'm assuming as a practicing psychologist, they probably are seeing one end of the spectrum, so there might be a higher preponderance of those narcissistic, sadistic, or sociopathic types of bosses, but one never knows. Third type here is uh, romantic partners, those who boycott name-calling and other vicious behaviors. I could see that would be something. But I'm going to go on to the next one here, which is drivers who almost never use their horn or drive aggressively. He says we all have to share the road, no matter how annoying that reality can be. How you drive says a lot about you. How you treat people you don't know. 
how you handle the anger, and to the extent to which you suffer from entitlement. Perhaps you'd like to believe that someone who drives slowly or non-aggressively is simply less busy than you, but driving in a cooperative manner that is mindful of your fellow commuters is actually a sign of integrity. It's interesting. Let's all try to practice it more when we're behind the wheel. Number five is people in positions of power apologizing for keeping their captive audiences waiting. Hmm. When someone feels it's important because they have pow more power than the majority of people around them, they often take themselves pretty seriously and don't think about the feelings of others. I'm talking about the company higher-ups who don't make a conscious effort to apologize to job interviewees for long waits, either on the day of the interview or during the long lapses between interviewing and hearing back about whether the candidate got the job. I could just as easily be referring to physicians who keep a waiting room full of people waiting well past their agreed-upon appointment times. Every day, people in positions of power, savoring their power, don't acknowledge how they infringe upon the time and demands of those who depend on them. When was the last time a physician came into an examination room and acknowledged how long you have been waiting? He says he's never heard a doctor say, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. Thanks for waiting. I'm sure you're probably busy. Goes on to talk about other sorts of areas. Uh, last one is volunteering. Interesting article by Seth Myers with regard to integrity. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talking. Uh, we're going to start talking about assessments and taking the integrity test. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is my strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, if you're just joining us, welcome. Today we're talking about integrity, talking about the pros and cons of being truthful, ethical, and fair, also known as integrity. Right before the break, we talked about signs of people with integrity. Interesting to know that parents who apologize to their kids for over-punishing or yelling at them People who drive without using their horns might have more integrity than those who don't. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the assessment and selection. Talking about how to go about testing integrity and honesty. I think this is an interesting topic because one can say, I have integrity. Another person could say, I have integrity. But you can never really know where they sit on the integrity scale, what end of the spectrum. So if you are interviewing for a job opening or posting and you want to test if someone has integrity, this segment is for you. All right, this article here is called Assessment and Selection Integrity and Honesty Tests. An integrity test is a specific type of personality test designed to assess an applicant's tendency to be honest, trustworthy, and dependable. And a lack of integrity is associated with counterproductive behavior such as theft, violence, sabotage, disciplinary problems, and absenteeism. Integrity tests have been found to measure some of the same factors as standard personality tests, particularly conscientiousness, and perhaps some other aspects of emotional stability and agreeableness. Integrity tests can be valid measures of overall job performance. This is not, surpa this is not surprising because integrity is strongly related to conscientiousness, itself a strong predictor of overall job performance. Like other measures of personality traits, integrity tests can add a significant amount of val validity to a selection process when administered in combination with a cognitive ability test. In addition, few, if any, integrity tests performant different performance differences are found between men or women or different races or ethnicities. Integrity tests will not eliminate dishonesty or theft at work. 
But research does strongly suggest that individuals who score poorly on these tests would be less suitable. So they talk about the different types of tests here. One of them is the overt integrity test, also referred to as the clear purpose tests, are specifically designed to measure attitudes related to dishonest behavior. They are distinguished from personality tests in that they make no attempt to disguise the purpose of the assessment. Overt tests often contain questions that directly ask of the applicant their involvement in illegal behavior, wrongdoing, such as theft, illicit drug use, and more. Such transparency can make guessing the correct answer obvious. Applicant faking is always a concern with overt integrity tests. The score results from tests should be interpreted with caution. Considerations here are validity. Integrity tests have been shown to be valid predictors of overall job performance. The administrative method can be administered via paper, pencil, or electronically. Subgroup differences, generally few if any, average score differences can be found between men and women or applicants of different races or ethnicities. Therefore, it's beneficial to use an integrity measure when another measure is greater, with greater potential for adverse impact, for example, the cognitive, effect, cognitive test, is included in the selection criteria. Both overt and personality-based integrity test scores seem to be correlated with age, indicating younger individuals have the potential to be more counterproductive employees possibly because of their youth, youthful tendencies towards drug experimentation and other social deviance. This is all according to this paper. These are their words, not mine. Development costs. The, purchase, the cost of purchasing an integrity test is typically less expensive than developing a customized test. Well, that makes sense. Administrative costs. General inexpense requires a few resources for administration. Utility and ROI, high investment on high return on investment in settings where counterproductive behaviors like theft, valuable valuable property or sensitive information, absenteeism are highly disrupting to the organizational functions. Common uses typically used to measure whether an applicants have the potential to be successful in a job. And I think this is an interesting point here, right? I mean, you've got uh, employees that you might be hiring or perhaps your coworkers. How do you know if they have integrity or not? There's overt tests that you can give that will try and determine if they are, do, if they do have integrity or not. But those overt tests might have some problems, right? I mean, if you ask a question uh, that says, you know, would you steal? And someone says yes. Well, if, if you know that that is going to impact your ability to get the job, you probably would select no. And I think, too, that, you know, as we go through this topic on integrity, there's always a, a spectrum. There's times when people are have integrity and do show integrity with with most of what they do. But there are certain areas where they might not be and sh not show or demonstrate that value. And I don't know if we can 100% judge people based on how they perform in every situation. Because as you know, when we were young, it would talk to us about peer pressure, and doing things that um, you know might not be the best thing for us to do, might not show that we have integrity, but there were ways to identify that behavior and do some sort of reprimand most likely a detention where you would uh, have to take some time out of your after-school activities to uh, spend time contemplating and thinking about it. And I think the same holds true for those of us in the workplace. You know, many of us go around our day-to-day -day jobs and do things based off of what we seem we deem important for the position. What is the company values? What would the corporation do? And even if you are somebody who has integrity, you might be in a situation where you're working for an employer whose expectations might not be genuine and it might counter your value system. So in that case, somebody who has high integrity and goes along 
with those, they're going to feel uncomfortable. They're going to feel stressed. They might not feel like they have control in that environment. And that might mean that your organizational culture is different than that of your employer. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about the problems with integrity tests. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. The show is My Strategy. I'm John M. Hawkins, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, if you're just joining us, welcome. My Strategy episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we've been talking about integrity, the pros and cons of integrity, signs of people with integrity. We just, uh, in the prior segment, talked about assessment and selection criteria. That's testing for people with integrity. Now, in this segment... We've just, like I said in the prior one, we talked about testing. In this segment, I want to talk about the problem with testing for integrity. I've got an article here from Nicoletta Bica, a senior content writer. It's about integrity tests. She starts off by saying, Henry Ford used to send committees to his employees' houses to check on their behavior. The good employees would avoid excessive alcohol, keep their wage, their houses clean, and do things the American way. These were his conditions for paying them a $5 wage. Ford's practices were very extreme, but it's not surprising that employers want to trust their people. For more than 60 years now, employers have been using integrity tests to avoid hiring high-risk candidates. These tests became popular in the United States after the Employee Polygraph Protection Act banned lie detector tests. Oh, imagine that, having to take a lie detector test to get a job. My, how times have changed. Employee integrity tests are meant to measure honest dependability and work ethic. They take two forms, overt and covert, as we discussed in the prior Segment. The overt and integrity test refers directly to dishonest and counterproductive behaviors, theft, cyber, loafing, absenteeism, etc. Covert testing is personality-based. They assessed integrity by proxy or conscientiousness. The new world of work, both mid- and entry- and senior-level execs admitted that changing business logistics will be a huge impact in the new post-COVID environment. But they have a question posed, which I think is a valid question. Are integrity tests effective? There's a large body of research with interesting results on this topic. Overt employee integrity tests have been shown to be valid and somewhat better in predicting job performance than personality tests or unstructured interviews. Covert integrity testing, on the other hand, can predict absenteeism better than overt testing. There's also evidence that employee integrity testing is generally less biased and more cost-effective than other forms of an assessment. And there's positive feedback from the employers who state that integrity tests have reduced worker compensation claims among the new hires. So it seems employee integrity tests and val their add value to the hiring process. Does this mean employers should use them? As with all assessment methods, there are a few more questions employers should ask before deciding to use an integrity test. For example, are employee integrity tests legal? There was a time when employee integrity testing asked about people's religious beliefs, their sexual orientation. Those tests were challenging court. Problems could also arise from tests that ask candidates whether or not they f were accused of or convicted a crime. Tests could also be invasive in a subtle manner. For example, some personality tests based tested candidates to rate statements like, I experience extreme mood swings. These statements try to assess dependability. 
but they can also be viewed as an indirect effort to diagnose a bipolar disorder. Thus, the test is discriminatory under the Americans with Disabilities Act. The pre-employment use of the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, MMPI, was challenged in court for this very reason. The law generally restricted the questions that integrity tests can ask. For example, Massachusetts has banned integrity testing altogether. So what do you do in this situation? Well, they suggest always ask the testing providers whether or not their tests comply with applicable laws and request proof, if, if possible. They should also be able to show evidence that, they aren't, that there aren't any observed or adverse impact against protected groups. It might also be a good idea to have a lawyer revise tests before you administer them. I think these are, you know, these are really good um, suggestions here, because if you think about it, integrity tests are, it is a personal thing that they're asking about, and those who are good at getting around these tests might absolutely be able to, you know, fake their way through it. But those who do have integrity, you know, they, they might have, have issues with the, with the tests as well because maybe they feel guilty about taking the test, or maybe they feel they have to answer in a certain way. So I always want to check and, and see if there is a legal, if it's legal for us to give these tests. They say, what to do here? Ask test providers if, it, if their tests comply with applicable laws. Another section here talks about integrity testing and can they be faked? Faking is a problem for all kinds of testing. Overt employee integrity tests make it easy for a candidate to tell employers what they want to hear. For example, candidates may have to rate statements like, I've lied to my boss to get out of trouble, or I would steal from work if I could get away with it. Many candidates will instantly know which answers are acceptable. It says here to ask test providers how their tests deal with candidates who fake answers. I think that makes sense, right? Also, some research suggests that faking doesn't affect ranking of candidates, although it might affect the overall score. And of course, deceptive people will still pass, and sometimes faking can have an effect on hiring decisions. Be prepared to take the results of the test with a grain of salt. Can integrity tests screen out good candidates? They said yes, false positives are always a concern. Past research found that employee integrity tests result in honest people being labeled dishonest. Some studies even show that overt integrity tests can sometimes misclassify almost half of the candidates. Many employers are tempted to use them to shrink their application pool, so they reject those who score below a standard. But if honest, talented employees are among those rejected, the company could be missing out. They say what to do, what to do. It's best to avoid allowing employee integrity tests to make decisions for you. Take some time, look at the answers, and interpret the results. You can also use integrity tests in conjunctions with other assessment methods. Are employee integrity tests ethical? It's an interesting one. Overt integrity tests often measure past dishonest behavior towards dishonesty. Both of those measures can create ethical dilemmas. On the one hand, we could wonder whether past offenders should be penalized forever. People can and often do repent. Past behavior doesn't always predict future action. It's difficult to be sure about the dishonesty levels of candidates who report stealing. Do they feel free to reveal it because they don't think it's bad? Or because they generally honest and regret their actions? So I think with anything, we don't want to rush our decisions. We need to make sure that these integrity tests are legal, I guess, number one. But also, you know, we need to take a look at it more than just giving a test and determining whether or not somebody is fit for a job. They may have repented and be the best employee ever, or maybe they didn't repent and would continue to do such behavior. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
When we come back, we're going to talk about how and why you may compromise your integrity. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. The show is my strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. All right before the break, we were talking about the problems with integrity tests, and this show is all about integrity testing. And is it something we should be doing or shouldn't be doing? And I think based on the last segment, there is reason to have integrity tests in the workplace. I guess the question is, how much do you rely on them? And are they legal? All right, in this segment, I want to talk a little bit about how and why you compromise your integrity. Your integrity is your word of honor and it makes you honorable. And it's important to understand how your integrity relates to your level of integration. I'm going to start off with an article here by Liz Tay, who's a business insider. Australia. She says, as famous athletes, as a famous athlete, you're offered $500,000 endorsement to promote a product line that you dislike and would never use. Do you endorse it? You are working on a project along with several other companies, and you notice that one of the companies is doing shoddy, dangerous work. In your rep if you report the company, your entire project may be shut down and you will lose 20% of your revenue for the year. Do you report the problem? The taxi driver gives you a blank receipt as they drop you off. You are on an expense account. Do you write in the exact correct amount? These are all questions that they suggest you ask to help test your integrity. You're golfing with an important client who thinks that golf skills are as important as business skills. Your ball is in a bad lie, but you can move it to a better position without being seen. Do you? You're backing into a tight parking space and work park, and you accidentally dent someone's car. Nobody saw you. Are you going to leave a note and take responsibility? A colleague wants to copy and swap some music CDs. You know it's illegal. Do you do it? You know you are attractive, and so does your prospective customer. Do you lightly flirt to get a major account for your business? A good friend has been unemployed for several months. They ask you to write a reference for a job that you don't think they're qualified for. Do you agree? You see some great content for a presentation. You know what's copyrighted and protection. Do you use it in your work presentation to make you look good? Your budget's tight. You procure some business services. The vendor forgets to invoice you. Six months goes by. Do you remind them to send the invoice? You are offered tickets to a rock concert with a potential supplier that is currently tendering for a big contract. It is your favorite band, and you really want to see them, and all tickets have been sold out for months. You know it will not influence your contribution to the tender process. Do you take the tickets? question is, how many times do you make an ethical choice over personal gain? And we can talk about integrity all we want, and people can say they have integrity. But as I read through these ways to test integrity. Many of these situations I've come across. I remember being a kid and, um, you know, your buddy has a CD or music. You know, do you just take it and, and burn it and play it? Or do you not and go down to the record store back in the day and buy the CD? A little bit different today. Same thing with Software licenses, you know, somebody has a software license. Do you borrow that friend's software license and use it as your own? These might seem like really simple, simple examples. And I wonder how many of us 
might have done some of these in the past. You know, the interesting one here for me is the content for a presentation. You might not really think about the copyright material, but if you are someone who is of the highest integrity, you would not use it. But then a little voice inside your head might say, well, what's the harm in doing that? What's the harm in doing that? So I think as I go through these examples and look at them, this really, really gets me thinking about the testing and what exactly we, we need to look at from a testing perspective. Because if somebody fudges on one of these, what are they going to do in the real world? And that's what we're trying to do is figure out how integrity will impact them. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to help you put your plan in place. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, in case you missed this broadcast, you can listen on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, or many other of the digital platforms. Just Google My Strategy, John M. Hawkins, and you should find uh, all past episodes. And if you'd like to have something covered in the show, send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com, or give us a call at 844-MY-STRATEGY. That's 844-MY-STRATEGY. On this episode, we've been talking about integrity. We started off talking about the pros and cons of being truthful, ethical, and fair. Went through a little definition of integrity. When the world seems to be engaged with lies and deceit, how much integrity do you have? Are you standing up for what you believe? There's pros and cons to everything. Those people, if you, the pros are people respect you because you abide by the rules. People who want justice will come to you. But it's not all positive because there's a pro and con to everything. And if you are someone with, who is ethical and fair, people might not like you. You might feel out of place with other peers. You could feel lonely because they are afraid to engage with you. Lots of signs of people with integrity. Parents who over-apologize to their children for giving the child a harsh punishment or yelling at them is an indicator that perhaps you do have integrity. Bosses who highlight their staff's accomplishment over their own also have integrity. What about drivers who never use their horns? Driving down the road, we all have places to go in this busy life. And how much do you use your horn? That could be an indicator of integrity. I guess the real question is, how do we go about identifying whether or not we have integrity and those we are working with have integrity? And from a hiring perspective, how do employers hire people with integrity? Well, the best way to do it is to do a assessment and selection by having someone take an integrity test. These integrity tests are a type of test that provide a candidate's tendency to be honest. Lack of integrity means they are counterproductive, potentially could steal from the company, be violent, sabotage, absent. Integrity tests are also designed to directly measure attitudes related to, dis related to dishonest behavior. Sounds great, right? Make everyone take an integrity test. There is a problem, though. According to a paper, Henry Ford used to send committees over to employ homes to check on their behavior. Was their house clean? Did they drink? That all was an indicator. Nowadays, there's two types of, two main classifications for integrity tests, overt and covert. Overt, you're directly asking people about their activities. Covert will look at your conscientiousness and can be an indicator of whether or not you have integrity. But the question is, are they legal or not? And you need to check with state and local laws to see if they are. Why do we compromise our integrity? Our integrity is our word of honor and makes us honorable. But it's important to understand 
how integrity relates to us. Sometimes we feel unimportant, inadequate, lonely, powerless, shameless, worthless, and more. Emotional pain and suffering can be strong as the hurt you need to escape. I think it all comes down to integrity or not. There's always going to be this effort, this element of peer pressure, especially in the workplace. Do you come clean and talk about a particular issue in a project if it means your company will lose the account? Do you use an image that might not be yours to help get forward with a presentation? These are all technically little indicators of someone who has integrity or not. So I think as, as we develop our own personal strategies, we need to be thinking about what is it we want to work on? What are those habits that, of integrity that we could focus on? And it comes down to consciously prioritizing and making commitments to our goals. And if you're having issues trying to figure out which ones to focus on, perhaps some coaching could be helpful. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. It's been a pleasure being with you today. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.